Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a landscape in watercolor, and I'm using a reference photo from my friend Mickey Harper. She shared this on Facebook, and I said, wow, that's so beautiful. I would love to paint it, and she said, go ahead. She gave me permission. So I'm going to start by just putting a horizon line in here with the T-square. It's a very quick and easy way to just make sure you're starting off on the right foot. And then I'm going to start sketching in um, these kind of like little bit of a land areas in this stream. This is kind of like a, a spring... Um, you know, just kind of a spring thaw type type painting. Got a little bit of a shore line there. Maybe I'll bring that out a little bit more. I'm using a water soluble Derwent Graffiton pencil in dark indigo. It's a little bit of a it's like a little bit of a an islandy. Not really an island, but just a little. Oh, you know how like on the rivers and stuff you'll see these little just like crops of like rocks and they'll have stuff growing. That's kind of like what we got going on there. Uh, and down along the bottom we have, we've got rocks and I love to sketch rocks. So get a little bit of gravel in here. It's probably around where she was standing to take the photo and then we've just got rocks and I like to I like to not fuss with rocks too much. I love painting rocks but I find that I get a much better result when I just be really kind of random and jagged with them and just kind of put some loose shapes in there. And I think that's about all I need honestly to uh to get my sketch going. This could probably actually come out a little bit further. All right, I've got my M. Graham watercolors and two jars of water. So I have one jar for cleaning my brush and the other jar for getting fresh water for washes. And I've got a paper towel here that is, well, this one's a little cleaner. We'll use this one. <laughs> we'll use that one to dab our brush. I'm going to start with a one inch flat brush. This is one of the brushes that I have uh, with Craft Ammo. And I'm going to paint, I'm going to wet right over all of the. Um, actually all above the horizon line. Oh, and I actually had some uh, some paint on the gummed area that didn't come off the pad, so I'm just gonna kind of clean that off. <laughs> it's from yesterday, so the painting I did yesterday, which was of the daffodils, that's up on my YouTube channel now if you're curious as to what is making that green. All right, I'm gonna use um, a little bit of cerulean. Maybe a little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Take a little cerulean, maybe add a little bit of cobalt to it. It's a little brighter patch of the sky over here. Maybe even get a little bit of a pink in the sky. I'm going to use a little quin red, very little bit. Damp and uh, get any extra water out of my brush before I go in there with that. A little bit of pink in the clouds. I don't want to add more water in because I'll get back runs, so I just want to get a little bit of blush of color. Keep in mind, it's going to dry lighter, so i got to make sure I account for that because this is a pretty wet background. What are the background, the lighter it's going to dry. And I think I might get a little bit of yellow ochre in the sky while I'm at it. Put 
put it in the lighter areas so it just kind of catches a little bit of sunlight, basically. All right, and that's how I'm going to have my sky. I'm just going to tip it so you can see it without any glare. Okay, um, now I'm going to go into my water. Now the water is very much a grayish uh, tone to it, so I'm going to take some of the cobalt, some of the cerulean, and some more of the burnt sienna. Even add a little bit of yellow ochre in there, so we're going to end up with a kind of a muddy, a muddy gray. have little bits of uh, white next to any land areas and at the horizon because that's going to be a land area above that. We may get a little bit of texture in there between the cobalt and the cerulean might give us a little bit of a, a little bit of a nice uh, nice granulation texture. Can vary it a bit. You can pick up a little bit more blue in it here and there. I like to have that variation. I think it's kind of pretty with that reflection on the sky as well. It's a little bit too much. I don't want to waste it though, so I'm just going to kind of mix it in a bit. A little bit of um, yellow ochre in the water. And in with a little bit of the green so it's not too, ah, a little more than that. If you're familiar with um, with uh, the water after snow melt, just kind of like in a temperate climate, you just get all this gray and grunge. I want to make my shapes a little bit bigger as we work forward because we are getting more close to the viewer. So our shapes are going to be bigger, just like our clouds would be bigger the further you get away from the horizon higher, the further you get away from the horizon lower, that's further, that's uh, going to be closer. The horizon is your most distant, uh, most distant area. Let me get some of that swirl in there. And I don't want it to be fussy. I've been feeling my paintings have been a little on the fussy side lately. I'm trying to kind of avoid that. Be a little bit lighter with my approach. Work with a big brush. Capture those colors of spring, those grays, uh, enhance them a little bit, but just really try to capture them. A little more brown in some of these areas. You get the muddy, you get both the muddy water and then just the browns being reflected in the water. Make sure I have enough blues on the edges here. Okay. 
to a pretty good start here. I'm going to work above the horizon line. It's damp, and I think I might use that to my advantage, but I think I'll use a different brush. Because I think if I got some blossoming up here as I was doing trees, it might not be a bad thing. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. And maybe a little bit of that cobalt blue. Get kind of an earthy, earthy, dark. Something that could be a hill with evergreens on it out in the distance, or even just shadows. Uh, now I'm going to take some yellow ochre, some sap green. Some trees that are just starting to bud. This cat's tongue brush is really versatile because then you can um, you can be nimble and get in these, get around these different places. I want some kind of pinky gray. Get the cobalt, the um, burnt sienna, and the quinred. Those would be more like um, when you have a tree branches, they haven't really budded out yet. All right, um, I think I'll make a nice dark with the cobalt blue and the burnt sienna. And put in this little land mass back here. Probably most likely just a kind of like a formation of rocks that have some uh, some trees growing up out of that. I'm gonna start the branch. Get an idea of what I've got to grow in here. You can switch to a liner if that's a little too uh, fine. I think I might actually. This liner is also from my set with Craft Ammo. I'll link to it in the video description if you're interested. I went with um, 
shapes and sizes that might not be the most common ones you'd have in your kit already, so they wouldn't be duplications. Like the cat's tongue and the dagger and the flat. But of course, use what you have. As always. Alright, now um, we'll get these guys in. I'm going to take that same dark color. I'm going to start that at the bottom of this. I'm just going to bring up some some shadow. A little bit of that over here, but not as much on this one. Um, now, the sap green and yellow ochre. A little bit of burnt sienna in that. Scrub out the horizon line that we can see there. Gonna add some. Oh, I think I might want to add a brighter yellow in there. Do I? Uh, let me let me just add some more yellow ochre and see what that gives me. I think I need a brighter yellow. I'm going to go with cab yellow. Brush is kind of wet there, so I might get a blossom, but I think that actually might work out okay. Yeah, if you don't want to blossom, you don't want to go in with a really juicy brush over a damp area, but I think this might actually be okay for that. It might actually give me the effect I'm looking at. Um, because it will make these kind of these chunks of rocks with stuff growing on them um, push out on top of everything. Extend the little base that they're on a bit. All right. Going back, I'm going to mix up some more of the uh, Burnt Sienna and Cobalt Blue to make some more of that dark. I like to warm it up a little bit as I come forward. Maybe even... Well, we'll start with this and I might add to it to have interesting shadows. So I think I'll make a purple with the cobalt blue and the quin red. And we'll drop some of that in there. Any color I have used, I feel is fair game to bring in again. Um, I think I'll bring some of this color down into my rocks. I 
and some yellow ochre. Oh, you know what? I think I'll switch to my flat brush again because flat brush is easier to do rocks because you already got that kind of like flat shape. And I'm going to grab some burnt sienna. I can re-sculpt my rocks a little bit if I need to. In this gravel area, I'm actually thinking that um, I might do a little bit of salt on that because I think I could get some really cool effects just by bringing in that mix of cobalt and burnt sienna and then sprinkling some salt into it. I've got to have enough color in it though, or enough, um, you know what I mean, not color per se, but enough pigment so that it's, it's dark enough for enough contrast. But let me grab the salt, sprinkle that right in while it's wet. It's like I never think of the salt until uh, I'm like at a point where I need it, but luckily I keep a I keep a thing of salt handy. And I'm just gonna very carefully sprinkle it only in the area where I want that texture. And we'll let that dry. And then I'm also going to take a credit card scraper, which I always have these to hand because um, I never know when I'm gonna need them. And Make some some nice textures and details in my rocks, and little scratches and nooks and crannies. I can even go in while things are still wet and add a little bit of pigment to that. Uh, let's do a little bit of a purpley. Ooh, I should have. Let me get a little bit of that purple. And a little bit of clean out that. The M. Graham watercolors are so sticky um, that you want to make sure you always uh, clean your brush before you go into a lighter color. That's probably a little bit brighter than what I want, but I do like to push my colors. And also your, your brighter and cleaner and warmer colors advance. Just making sure that I do not disrupt that salt. And there are some like reeds over here. I think I'll go ahead and put those in. The sap green and yellow ochre. They're not soup, they're not, they're actually quite dull in color, but um it's spring and I really want to just have things starting to starting to uh, come to life. And it's my world and I can paint it however I want. Frame it with a few over here too. We'll do some with just the yellow ochre because a little bit of burnt sienna. And at this point, I think we probably ought to let this dry and uh, 
Let me come back in and work work a little bit more on it in a few minutes. You can already start to see the salt taking effect there. Oh, you know what? I think I might also do a little bit of spattering. I don't have enough on there. Looks like I should have got a little, got my, uh, well, maybe not. I was like, should I have gotten my gravel a little higher? I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. I need to bring the rocks down a little bit further. Be sure that this is where you want your rocks when you do it though because you're scraping the paper and it is going to make the, uh, it's going to leave lines that you will not be able to get rid of in the future. I'll let this dry fully. I actually went over to the Room of Hoard to put some supplies away and my bookcase, which has been up for years, was just knocked over. And I looked online to see if we had any earthquakes in the area and we didn't, so I guess there was one like a day and a half ago, but I was in there yesterday afternoon getting uh, cake decorating tips out of one of my storage things. So yeah, totally, totally wild. I have no idea. I didn't hear any noises, but I was out for a while last night. So could have happened then, I guess. Totally, totally weird. Okay, and we're going to work on this area here and I think I will go right in. I want something with a little bit of red to it. I think I'll do the Quinn Red... Do a little bit of the, oh my gosh, clean your brush in between you hobo. There we go. And maybe a little bit of the blue there. Hey, a little bit more red. Look, I mean, that's gotten so sticky. I mean, you can, I'm already making a little divot in there from the, these, these, Rewet so well. I mean, almost a little too well sometimes. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put these little uh, red branches in here. I don't know what they are, but I see them all the time in the spring. They're just and they're just these like little red vines, kind of. Actually, you know what? I think I should just kind of paint an area and drag the shapes up from it. Do the same thing over here. I'll just kind of fill an area in. I'm gonna go over that shadow color though. Um, I'll grab a little bit of sap green. Some mossiness, maybe. A little yellow ochre with some cad yellow. Maybe some of that over here too. Really freshen it, giving that a fresher spring feeling. Grab some of this brown from the center of my palette. Do some like uh, trees just kind of growing out of this little tuft. You can give us some scale by going right off the uh, Right off the the page. I'll switch to a liner though because I don't want to get it too unwieldy. And actually got a little bit of that cobalt blue to add in here. And then I can do some 
long wispy strokes. So I did this line there. I wanted to have it utilize Taclon um, bristles so that it would be a little easier to control. Sometimes the ones that use a synthetic squirrel hair are just too floppy and it's hard to get the lines that you want to get. And it still carries quite a bit. I can still make a lot of lines before I have to reload, so I'm happy with the way that came out. I'm just going to do a few little uh, little tiny perpendicular branches. They haven't blossomed yet. They haven't budded out yet. You could put some red or green buds on them if you want to. I'm going to keep it simple. Now I want something with a little bit more blue. A little bit of that red in there too. Because I've got these guys over here that got a little bit too misty. There. I just wanted a little bit of something. I think I'll go with my dagger brush. You could use a small flat if you don't have a dagger. I'll get a little bit more of that cobalt in the mix. Oh, I'm not looking forward to painting. It's funny because I do like organizing, but all those books were very well organized. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm really not looking forward to going in there and picking up all those books, but it's like, on the other hand, I can't leave them like that because they're on a cement floor and I don't want the moisture to damage my books. I have both art books and like us, uh, like pads, of watercolor paper that are, they're not, they're like kind of medium size. It would be like around, you know, too big for my the other bookcase where I keep my sketchbooks, but it's got like, uh, you know, 9 by 12 pads of watercolor paper. I've got some pads of arches in there and stuff. It's like I don't want them, don't want them to get ruined. So I'm definitely going to have to do something before very long. I just like to use palette mud here and just kind of in shoppy, blocky kind of shapes and define my rocks a bit. Give them the shape. Uh, I think I want to go back in. I think I want some more of that sap green, but the sap green on its own is a little bit too fresh looking. I need it to be a little bit duller. So I'm just picking up some palette mud and some of the yellows that are out of my palette. Loading up that dagger real good. And I'm going to kind of cut in a little area there. I do need a little more darker there. Kind of getting a little too. Oh, it's getting a little too chunky and blah. I don't like that. I love the room in a studio palette. I love having that extra room.
I'm gonna go in with a, with a liner brush. If you're not used to M. Grams, they can be a little unwieldy just because you get so much paint on a brush. Because once you start getting going with them, they, uh, they liquefy so much. I don't travel, well, I think I do have a couple colors in my travel palette, but they tend to get a little soupy if you're not careful, especially when you're out and about painting. So it's definitely a good studio brand, but maybe not a good travel brand and maybe not a good studio to brand, depending on how um, humid your studio is. Maine can be kind of humid in the summer and I work in a basement, which is going to be a little more humid. Looks more like grass than reeds, but I kind of like that. I think it's all right. Okay, and I like how it's um, it's more crisp up here and like more subdued back there. Oh shoot, I should let that dry a little bit more before I went in there. But there there are some grasses and moss and stuff in the foreground. I want to get those in. I actually got quite a few things I need to get done today, and my day is getting away. My day is getting away. I don't know how that happens. Honestly, I'm up early. Sometimes I kill it, and some days the day just the days just get away from me. I walked the dog maybe a little bit later than usual. I must have. I walked the dog a little bit later than, than usual. I think that's probably how today got away. I think I'll use a sponge to do a little bit of moss. Let's take this sea sponge and dip it in my water. Get up, get rid of the extra. I said that noise. It's my Facebook Messenger. I, uh, I sent a photo to my husband. I'm like, did you hear a noise last night? And I sent the photo of like the, oh, I could show you. I'll show you. Hold on, let my phone out. I'll show you what it looks like. Man, it is. It's got a new phone and it doesn't always recognize my face. <laughs> oh, let's see. Can I find it? I know. You're like, why? Look, can you see that? Look at that. That's what is on my bookcase is flat and there broke I broke some frames. I broke a, like an award that I got a big glass. It looks like a soap opera award. It's from Teachable um, for a sales month and then all my books are there waiting for me to deal with them. Oh, it's going to be such an ordeal. <laughs> but, you know, by the time you watch this video, I'll be all done with that. So, I'll be all set. Oh, let's get some little mussies. Let's get some little mussies. Let's put some little mussies around the ground. Let's put some little mossies on the ground. Mossies on the ground. Way more moss than we have in the pick. But that's okay, cause that is my shtick to overdo it. To overdo it. My name is Lindsay and I like to overdo my paintings, yeah. Thank you very much. I find it on Spotify. <laughs> I feel like I want to do I want to do a little I think I do. I think I do want a little little something over here. I might regret it. I might regret it. Do you think that I'll regret it? Cause I might. Less is more is not my motto. <laughs> it is my plight. <laughs> no more is <laughs> regret is my plight. Um, let's see, you know, I could just leave it like this. Maybe I should, 
but I feel like the water needs a little bit more. Uh, maybe I'll do, I'll go in with this brush, number eight round. Honestly, probably do the whole painting with like a few brushes. I could go back in with this, but sometimes I like to vary my brushes for the, for the just for the fact that um, I can get, I'll get a more varied appearance without, you know, sometimes if you use the same brush, I think I used the flat before. Um, sometimes when you use the same brush, you end up getting um, kind of too much similarity. You need a little more variety. You don't get enough variety sometimes when you use the same brush. Now let's give me a little bit of reflection there. And do a little bit up here too. One of the things that I loved about this painting was that it, it just seemed like something that I could keep more um, loose. So I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that freshness. And I've been doing that a lot. Like I start to paint something that's like, oh, it's going so well. It'll be better if I do this other thing. And it's never better. It's usually like, oh, now I've got to fix that terrible mistake I've made. And there isn't a lot of value contrast in this photo because it's all, you know, it's a spring gray business. I think I'm going to leave it. I think this is good. Maybe just do that in the reflection there and up there. Just carry the reflection color. And actually though, could have a little bit of a little bit more dark. Right. Something like that. Oh, I like how it blends in. I like that. Let me make some of that purple. Oh, it's too watery. Oh. Some of that into our little Send that to our reflection, yeah, just a little bit of red. I mentioned how I sometimes get a little bit too, I don't know, like I'd be so excited to use my M grams, but then I'd find like they're my favorite watercolors, but then I wouldn't be happy with the paintings I did with them. And I think part of that was just because um, well, for one thing, you get your expectations up a little bit higher, but also I think it's just that, like, how strong they are. I jump around to so many different brands, and a lot of times I'm reviewing brands that are more um, budget-friendly, and I f kind of forget how how good these perform and how strong they are, and then I end up being like, oh, I've overdone it. I've got way too much color there than I wanted. I forget how to use a light touch, you know? Hmm, I think that's all right. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna call this done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If there's more you wanna do to it, you can do more to yours, absolutely. Do whatever you wanna do. Um, I will put, put a uh, uh, finished photo in here for you to see. 
Yeah, so you can see it all dry and whatnot, or if I do decide in the future to do anything to it, you'll see that. But I think that I'm pretty happy with the way this is. Maybe I'll just take that sponge real quick. I know, famous last words, right? Take, take the sponge real quick. Take a little bit of cad yellow. Because cad yellows tend to be a little opaque. I think that might be nice on the moss, and that will help bring the eye forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm absolutely done now. Yeah, I like that. It's fun. It's that kind of just pre-spring brown <laughs> but still pretty because you still know spring's coming so it's still you know exciting to see and i want to thank mickey harper for letting me paint her photo today i really appreciate it sometimes uh i'll see beautiful photos posted by my friends on facebook and i ask i'll ask them if i can paint them and usually people say yes and i love it i love that so there you have it thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this give me two thumbs down if you don't and until next time happy crafting bye